That's for you, you idiot! Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Diamond Select Toys action figure review on the Marvel Select Sandman. Try to pick this up, you can do so at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And I gotta give a big thanks to Diamond Select Toys for sending out this product to review for you guys. If you want to see the latest from Diamond Select Toys, check the link in the description below. And man, I've been anticipating this figure's release for quite some time time a lot of accessories over here anyway nice image of sandman right there on the side then you get a lot of product shots right over here you can see spidey green goblin there's a read up over here if you want to read it go ahead and pause it right now then on this side there's not much going on not much on the top and of course not much more at the bottom so let's get to it and crack this thing open and here's sandman out of the packaging and there are some really awesome things going on with this figure i have to say right off the bat but then there's also some things that make me go like oh, well, why and i'll get into those gripes in a little bit but man, yeah, we get some really cool accessories with this figure. So let's get a closer look at all of those, and then we'll take a closer look at Sandman. So I love that we still get a base with this figure. It's just this very sandy disc right here, which looks really good. You know, you get some nice cracks sculpted in there. It looks like it's supposed to be pavement or something like that. And you can see the sand looks great. You can see where they're supposed to plug the feet in right there with those pegs. That is pretty cool, but not my favorite accessory. So my favorite thing about this figure, as well as the most bewildering thing about this figure, are the accessories. There's just some things going on here where I'm thinking like, why do you do this? Why do you do this? But there's also some very awesome things going on as well. Uh, we get four right hands for this figure and then just two left hands. I don't understand why. We get a pair of fisted hands, then we get these two fingers out kind of pose going on, so we get a pair of that. And then you get one wide open hand right over here, and then you have a trigger uh, finger gun hand right there in case you want him shooting Uncle Ben. And then you have this whole little uh, spike roller thingy. Which looks dope. I love the detailed sculpt in this. That looks really cool. So I'm very happy with that. Nice highlights and everything on the paint. I like how it goes into the forearm right over here. Then you also get this mace, which looks awesome as well. Uh, I did have a lot of bent spikes over here, so I did heat this up and straighten out the spikes. It wasn't very hard to do at all, but man, this looks awesome. Even when I darken things up a little bit, you could see more details in there. Very cool looking, pleased with those. Uh, this is another, uh, why you do this kind of thing where it's like we have two sandy left hands right here and it's like, oh, why couldn't we get a right and a left? You know what I mean? It's just so weird to me, but they both look great. I like the sculpt on them. Again, the paint apps are just phenomenal. And then you get this whole sandy tornado, which is great. I love this for the base of the figure. This is really cool, man. Ah, I really dig this a lot. This is definitely a highlight of the piece. Very well sculpted. Again, paint looks fantastic as well. Uh, an issue I had, though, is that this port had come off on me and gotten stuck in the figure, so I needed pliers to take this out, so that's a little irksome. I may just have to, like, glue this inside this piece so I don't have that happen to me again. And of course, all you gotta do, you know, is just pop them off right over here in half, and then you just wanna make sure all these little spikes are sticking outside. See, this tends to get caught right over here, but you wanna make sure that all the spikes are sticking out and then now you have Sandman and his little sand tornado effect looking great. Now going back to interchanging the arms though, I wanted to mention that the right side I feel like I just had a little bit too much plastic on it. I did have a hard time getting some of these accessories ported right on here so I did shave this down with an X-Acto knife. A little frustrating but not the worst in the world. I'm able to get these on here now and I feel like these particular effects are, uh, you could hear that squeaking sound so that works out pretty well. I just wanted to demonstrate porting this on right over here. Yeah, It's also tricky to do because it's kind of sharp but you know these spikes are bendy there it goes, a lot of twisting and whatnot, and there you go. So yeah, now they're on there, so that's pretty cool. So I think this is a pretty good looking head sculpt, fairly interesting facial expression right over here, like he caught someone looking at his girlfriend's butt or something like that. Yeah, I don't know, that just looked pretty funny looking to me. But I do like it, you know, he shouldn't be all like gleaming with a grin or anything, so yeah. I like the grimace expression that we have right here, the eyebrows look really good, the mouth looks good, and the head looks really good all the way through, I think. A little bit of paint splotching around right there, but you know, the hair looks pretty well detailed. Detailed, and he has that Norman Osborn hairstyle going on, which I don't know how this is supposed to look like in real life. Like, could someone send me a link to like somebody's hair that actually has this hairstyle, but in real life? I, I don't know what that's based off of. I, I don't really get it. But anyway, looking at the rest of the figure, he has his iconic green striped shirt right here, looking really good, so I'm very pleased with that. 
looks great. A uh, big gripe I have about this figure, probably one of my biggest gripes, is the pose. Like, he's got this weird hunch thing going on, and you cannot get his abs to go back. You know, this ab joint won't go back at all. So he's stuck hunched forward forever. It's just really irritating why you do this, but it's, you know, still looks good. You know, nice detailed lines sculpted in here, so that's great that they didn't just deco it on there. It's all sculpted, nice back muscle. But yeah, I just wish you could, you know, I'll get into the articulation more in a moment. But looking at the forearms right here, we saw these earlier, not looking too bad. The pants look really good. Nice silver paint right there for the belt. I like how we have this little slight detail of gray mixed in here with the black, so it's not just one flat color. As you can see, some gray mixed in there. Nice wrinkles and some seams on the side, so I'm liking that. Looks very realistic. Great looking boots. Nice touches of silver right over here. You get stitching sculpted throughout. I like that. Nice treads at the bottom of the feet, and we do get peg holes. Here's looking at the back of the figure, you get your Sandman butt, and then there's that Sandman back again. So the articulation on this figure is pretty decent. Uh, you can't move his head up though, so that's frustrating. Well, I guess if you push it, uh, there, he'll just tilt his head a little bit up. Actually, with a little bit more effort, I was able to actually half this over here, so he can look up that much. And he doesn't really look down that much. You do get side to side motion and a little bit of head tilting right there. Shoulders move outward all the way up that far at 90 degrees, which is great. And you can move him down that much. You can rotate a full 360, you can do a bicep swivel, single jointed elbows meet at 90 degrees. You get forearm rotation. Then all the hands turn side to side and hinge up and down. The diaphragm joint can turn side to side. Like I said earlier, it cannot crunch back at all. It does move forward just the time. It actually just wobbles forward and back. It doesn't even really fully crunch forward and back. And and it kind of wobbles at the pivot motion. So yeah, you only get, you know, wobbling pivot and wobbling forward and back. You do get the waist swivel and he does have the hips that move outward that far. And then he can kick up that much and back, not at all. And then he has an upper thigh cut, double jointed knees. Then the ankles can move down a little bit. They don't really move up much because the cuff of the pants get in the way, but it can shift up a little bit right there. And then you can turn the ankle side to side. And he does have ankle pivot, which is actually a lot better on the left leg for some reason rather than the right side over here. It's really weird. The ankle pivot just works a whole lot better on this side than on this side. Now measuring out Sandman with the legs attached right here, you can see that he's standing just a little over seven and a half inches tall. And then measuring Sandman with the sand accessory right here, you can see that he's standing just at about the same height, just a little over seven and a half inches tall. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but there is a configuration that you need to follow when you port this on here. You do want these little spikes kind of moving more to the right when you port this on. It just works a whole lot better. Now to compare this Sandman figure next to some notable Marvel Select figures. We have our only other Sinister Six or original Sinister Six character from Marvel Select. We have Electro. And then we have the awesome Spider-Man. Not the weak one, but the awesome Marvel Select comic Spider-Man right here. And I think the height difference between these three looks really good. And then for your Sandman figure comparison, we have the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Sandman. And then we have the Hasbro Build-A-Figure Sandman with this customized mace piece right over here from Mexico City. Thank you so much. But yeah, it's kind of a trip seeing the Marvel Legends stand taller than the Marvel Select. I always thought this was a bit oversized. Uh, but this does stand taller than the Marvel Legend right here, so you could use it in a Marvel Legends display if you wanted to. Uh, one thing I wanted to show uh, was that this whole uh, sand tornado thing kind of fits with the Toy Biz one, but it's still slightly off, so it's not perfect, and it does not really fit with this uh, Hasbro Marvel Legends sand effect at all. And then comparing the select Sandman next to a couple Sinister Six Marvel Legends figures, uh, we have the Craven 2-pack figure right there, and then we have the customized Dave Wheeler Doc Ock, which I love so much, and he doesn't really fit into scale with them with the legs on here and everything. It does look a bit out of place. But if you go ahead and add the sand effect and everything or the sand tornado effect right there It could kind of work. You know what I mean? I don't know There's a good chance I could replace my Marvel Legends Sandman with this one right over here. It's possible I don't know if you guys remember I did make my own sand effect similar to this didn't look anywhere near as cool And then just to add insult to injury with this cannonball figure from Marvel Legends I just wanted to show these two side by side because this guy didn't come with any accessories at all aside from the build a figure parts And this guy has all kinds of accessories and he has the interchangeable legs with the effects part right over there and he's only about five bucks more you know this guy runs anywhere from 27 to 30 bucks this guy's anywhere from like 20 to 25 bucks so the price difference isn't that drastic and you get so much more with this figure but this one can lean back this one cannot and then here's the Marvel select Sandman extra average six and scale figure we have the Marvel Legends big time badass spider-man all right first day with a new look gotta make sure I stretch it out get my back in don't you want to stretch man huh no nope. what you can't bend your back like this what? You can't? Lame! Ha! <laughs> Badass.
So definitely not a bad Sandman figure by any means. I mean, just the accessories alone just really make the figure worth it. If you're a fan of having Sandman in action figure form, you're definitely going to like this. I mean, even in a default display with just using that sand tornado right there and just adding a couple of the accessories, I mean, it's just gonna look cool on the shelf. So no matter what, it's a good looking piece. However, I do have my gripes, you know, with the articulation here and there and some of the things like me having to shave off that peg to get those accessories on there, that's a them, so it kind of knocks it down just a peg for me, but I still really like it a lot. And at the price point of around 27 to 30 bucks, I'm giving this figure a sud rating of I love it. Then I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like the video, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And a big thanks to all these people over here that support me over on Patreon. I just posted another giveaway yesterday over there. And if you want to see the latest in Marvel news, be sure to check out marvelousnews.com. And don't forget to follow me over on the Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace! And, uh, action figures, action figures, action figures every day. Sharp as Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.